Hey there YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part two on this Holden WB Ute. We're gonna be doing a full repair and respray on. The previous video went through some of the prep work, some of the repair procedures and a bit of the primer work as well. We then got the car into the booth. We painted the inside of the tub or the tray. We also did some of the chassis, the underneath of the engine bay area. I did skip out the prep work as far as these panels go. I do apologize about that. It just turned out that I didn't end up recording it. Now I do apologize about that little glitch there. Putting these time-lapse videos together do take a little bit of time I've actually got 5,000 single still images so sometimes when you're importing them they end up getting muddled up a little bit I do obviously try my best and as far as I know the rest of it is all in the correct order anyway now the color and uh, clear that I'm going to be using is actually Metalux and that was mainly because we had a Metalux system in this shop when I moved in and it was just gonna be easier because we had the color cards. We just said to the customer, you come in, have a look at the color cards, choose the color, we can get it mixed and ordered in. It'll also give us an idea of what we think about the Metalux range. And I just ended up finding that the color was quite weak it didn't go very far. We ordered a full four liters, and usually a full four liters would do a full respray. Now, don't forget, this is only a ute too, so there's only two doors on it. And towards the end of this project, I could see myself running out, so I really had to go into paint saving mode, and I think I had about 10 mils left after I finished painting the entire car, but not to worry, I got around it, and um, it wasn't a big deal at all. So we did also use the Metalux clear coat as well. The clear coat that we used was the Platinum Clear, and it's extremely extremely thick. It's classed as an MS clear, but um, as the uh, guys told me, they said it's like two or three microns away from actually being a HS clear. So it's actually, yeah, quite thick. You still need a good 10% reducer in it to get it to flow out nice. During the colder months, I'd probably recommend getting a bit of heat into it. Um, so yeah, you know, whether or not you do my method and put it in a bucket of warm water or something just to get a bit of warmth in there and uh, thin it down a little bit. That'll also help you flash off times. Um, but yeah, in the warmer months, maybe just go for the reducer instead. But um, yeah, I've actually heard that since Metalux have gone uh, and they've gone out of business, I did also hear that Axalta have bought them out. Yet to be confirmed. I don't know. I don't really uh, spend much time talking to the Metalux guys because the guys that came into Perth would always just bag out uh, the guys that were looking after us through Standox and uh, Axalta. I did find out later on that there's a little bit of a rivalry between them and they've got some history. So they've got their own reasons for saying that kind of stuff, but I can't see um, yeah, the people that are helping us out um, getting bagged out by the people that aren't helping us out, you know. I'm gonna go to the people that do help us out, you know. Um, they say, oh, we're not gonna give you any discount until you start buying more office. And I say, well, I'm not gonna buy any more office until you give us a discount. So, you know, I, I mean, their product is okay. Like, it's it's definitely better than the concept paint. I'm not gonna lie about that. The Metalux is, you know, it's a mid-range paint. It's not high range. I would not say that it's up there with the Standox and Glazerets and Spees Heckers and, um, you know, those top of level paints. It's mid-range. And the main reason would probably be their color matching tools don't quite seem to be right up there with the Glazerets, Standox type paints, which I've got a lot of experience with. And also the coverage, you know, like if this color was in Standox, I'd just about guarantee two and a half coats, you've got yourself coverage. Whereas with this, it just seemed like you needed that extra coat. You know, I usually like to get coverage and then just put uh, another half coat over just to be sure, you know, there's nothing worse than getting a car out in the sun and finding out all you needed was another half coat of base coat. You know, what was that really gonna cost you? An extra hundred dollars for the entire job maximum, you know, for that extra liter of paint. But then, um, yeah, once you put your clear down, you've masked it all up, you've gone all that effort to prep it up, and then you come outside and you see that the car's see-through, that totally sucks. And I have been caught out with stuff like that before, going from a top-of-the-line paint, say, like Glazerit. I used to paint with Glazerit 2K just about every single day at work, but then I used some De Beers on the weekend on my own car, like on my Tirana, you know? I'm used to, like, with Glazerit's 2K22 uh, line it was, you could put one and a half coats of paint over and that's it, you got coverage. I put two heavy coats of red over my own Tirana. It looked covered in the booth, it really did. I mean, it's my own car. Like, the last thing I wanna do is have a see-through car. Um, but then I got it outside and there was see-through patches all through the door jams where my cut-throughs were and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, as you, you know, you start going down in the price, 
you may end up start going up in the amount of material that you need. So it may end up even being a false economy sometimes. Um, yeah, but look, as far as the concept paint goes, that is a low level and low quality paint. You know, I'm not gonna lie, um, but we were basically just forced to do it. As I was saying in the previous video, customers have got um, budgets that they wanna work around. And look, at the end of the day, 10 grand is a lot of money, you know, to be out of pocket to get your car re sprayed. Not everyone's even got that much money, and I get that. But if you look at it from my side of things, um, you know, I've got a lot of uh, overheads. Like I've got to, you know, pay my uh, insurance, my rent, my power bills, and everything. You know, that's where it just starts. And you probably got around fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars on materials, and that's before the tax man reaches his grubby little hands into your back pocket as well. But yeah, they're all just a few of the reasons that I wanted out of this shop. So I actually have since left this shop. I left it about two months ago. Today is twenty second of January, so you guys might be getting this a little bit of a delay because I'm a little bit ahead on my videos but um yeah look i'm a lot happier i'm in thailand at the moment moving up to Laos in about one month the novelty of having your own shop sort of wears off after about three or four months and then the reality of working in a average shop that's probably a little bit low tech you know um probably hits in and you're like you know what i was making double what i was making um working for someone else without all this stress you know stuff this so yeah after a year i'm like you know what i'm out of here whether or not it was going to be over here in thailand which is what i ended up doing or it was going to be back to melbourne i still wanted out of this shop i mean i did fine out of it like i was able to save a fair bit of money in the year that i was there i mean it's not like i was going out and getting drunk every weekend and i i did actually do a hell of a lot of work and a big part of the reason i also wanted to uh start this shop up was um actually for this youtube channel because i found that my videos towards the end of the first year of the gunman was getting they were getting very same same type thing you know um it was i was stuck with the content because i was stuck with what you know my job at work is restricted it's like prep color match mask paint you know i didn't really do much else other than that so i wasn't doing all the um you know the bigger jobs and some of those larger projects and i wasn't doing everything and um yeah definitely this youtube channel has grown mm, like really big in the year that i um had in my own workshop but i just felt personal my own reasons i had to get out of there and yeah i feel as if i did make the right decision by getting out and um yeah even my next move may actually revolve around this youtube channel as well i really want to take you guys with me like to the next step which could be um, going back to Melbourne and working in a state-of-the-art BMW collision repair center where they've got you know water-based paint they've got like state-of-the-art booths absolutely everything is you know really good so um that's why I'm thinking yeah take you guys along for the ride there but first we're going to Lao I'm gonna be making some mad videos in Lao was actually through this YouTube channel that I met a guy he's an Englishman and he's living in Lao at the moment he's got a panel shop up there with another local guy it's actually a decent sized panel shop I think they've got like for oh, 10 or 20 people working for them and he just said man come up here do what you want you know if you want to try and make it work you can stay here forever and I'm thinking at this point I'll just do six months up there show you guys what it's like third world spray painting you know it's gonna be really different and I'm thinking that some of the DIY guys will really have something to uh, benefit from a lot of the methods that they do up there because uh, it's, it's basically low-tech so it's the other end of the spectrum from what I was talking about as as this BMW workshop that I really do want to go to um, yeah it's you know take it right back to basics and do everything that it, you can to save money because uh, labor is cheap, but parts and uh, stuff are really expensive. So, like I've seen some some of the work that they've done up there, and it, it really does blow your mind. Like cars that would just be totally written off easily written off in the west and panels that would just be thrown out you'd be like you, you give some of those panels to an aussie panel beater and they'd just laugh at you they'd say there's no way i'm repairing that it'd take them a full eight hour day if not more to get it repaired at their hourly rate you know around fifty dollars is generally the going rate in australia for a decent panel beater um so you know 300 bucks to repair a panel and then the owner of the car would say hey i don't want that car that panel repaired i want a new part on it because i'm paying my insurance whereas in Laos, it's totally different you know whatever it takes to get it done and keep the cost down and um yeah i mean i think it's going to be something that yeah people can really benefit from and um 
the people that don't benefit from it just see how it's done just out of interest i mean i'm interested to see uh the kind of methods that they're going to be doing like they're doing open air painting like they don't even have a spray booth they're saying that they want one but it's just literally out in the workshop anyway this is a couple of those panels after being painted just a little bit of video footage to end the video off with um yeah it's something different i do apologize about those couple of little glitches but yeah i'm sure you can understand that putting a time-lapse video together isn't exactly as easy as a normal video with all those single frames. Now, yeah, there was a little bit of a sort of dry orange peel up the top of that door, but we just gave it a bit of a sand back. Um, you know, not actually sand it back dead flat, but just took the tops off some of those um, uh, orange peel bits, and there was a few bits of dust there. This door didn't seem to be so bad, but yeah, main, mainly in the... Um, passenger side door it looked a little bit average but that's painting for you um i was always told when i was an apprentice as long as you can fix it with a buff it's okay stay tuned for the rest of this video in the coming weeks also make sure you check out my website thegunman.net.au give it a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed watching it now you've seen this video get out there and paint some shit thanks for watching and this has been another gunman production goodbye